Hi guys, showed you I picked up this little car in one of the charity shops recently and I tried it with all my 27 megahertz transmitters, 40 megahertz, 45, 49, doesn't respond to any of them. So I'm going to do a tear down. In fact, you can probably see I've already taken the screws out because as soon as I took the cover off, I could see why it wasn't working. That's an infrared receiver. <laughs> so there's no point in trying my radio control transmitters on it. It needs infrared. Now, unfortunately, for some reason or other, infrared doesn't seem to be as compatible as ordinary toy grade radio control. And although I've got about a dozen or so infrared transmitters, none of them talk to this or it doesn't respond to any of them. So I think I might do a little conversion just for the fun of it. See if we can convert this to a normal radio control toy grade receiver and get it working. Now I've noticed we've got odd bits of wire floating around. I don't know what they're tucked up in there for. They are extremely fine wires. I mean those look to me like they're the wires that go down to the steering. So maybe they've come off their connectors already. There's another pair of wires there that go in that direction. I wonder if they go all the way around and come back to the drive motors. So anyway, we've got a bit of work to do there. We'll just see if we can make this work with one of those kits I bought the other day. Transmitter and receiver, 27 megahertz. Might be interesting to see if we can get that to work. I'm guessing, I haven't checked, but I'm guessing the steering is probably magnetic steering. A little magnet that's pulled side to side with two coils. And then we'll have one of those tiny little 3.7 volt sort of size electric motors with a couple of gears on it to drive the back wheels. So that's what I'm going to do, see if we can just get it to run with a toy grade radio control. Uh, I can see the drive motor is the red and blue wires. So I'm not quite sure what these two are. Well, we'll find out in a minute if we can get it off. solder this just to get it off. Oh, they're soldered together. Ah, I respect what it is. The two coils on the steering probably goes from the motor terminal through one coil, solder to the other coil, through the other coil, and then back to there. So both coils are energized at the same time. One one way and well, yeah, so the magnet swung, swings across. Uh, can we actually see this? Trying to see. Oh, that unclips there. Right. That 
doesn't want to come up. Doesn't want to come free. I wonder if they're actually glued. I reckon the st steering's glued. I said the glue, the casing is glued together. So although it's clipped, it just doesn't want to move. Ah, I've got some movement now. There we go. Right. Let's see if we can get that up and see what's inside. Come, doesn't want to release. Why doesn't it want to release? Got to do these clips as well. That's better. Got movement now. Other side doesn't want to come off. Are we ready? Let me zoom in a little bit. Right, well, I can see the two coils underneath, those are springs to centralise the steering, there's our magnet, so it will swing across depending on which way the current's flowing on which coil. So magnet, and depending on which way the current's flowing, it will either swing over to that coil or swing over to that coil. And that's how the steering works. I'll desolder it. I'll desolder them there so we can pull the circuit board clear. That's our steering wires. Right. So we want to put this one on there.
these are going to be a bit more challenging. We'll do it this way just for testing purposes. Because what I haven't done is actually cleaned all the hair and that that's in here. So when I try forwards and backwards, we are getting a reaction. But I think I need to take the drive out and get all the bits of hair and muck out of it. How about the steering? See if we can put that back in place. How about if we just balance it there? Yeah, looks like it. Yeah, looks like the steering might work. So I'll take the drive apart. Because we've got no on off switch there either. So I have to pop the battery out while I'm working on it. Right, let's take that apart. Oh yes, that's full of hair. Right, so that's okay. I think that adjustable pot is probably not going to fit in there with the body shell back in place. Whether it fit in there if I turned it round the other way, I think it might still be a problem. So at the moment, we're just going to fit it in there, temporary.
hair in it, so I'll clean the hair out of that. Right, see if we can get the top back on again. Yeah, that did look like that was glued around the front there. So we were lucky getting it off, I think. In place, How about steering. We might be underpowering it a little bit. That doesn't seem to want to swing across that way. Just looking to see that I've got the spring in the right place. Yeah, that looks okay. Yeah, doesn't seem so keen on the left turn as the right. Looks like it works though. So that's uh one of those cheap toy grade receivers. I haven't put the aerial on it, we're just working off the um, the link that normally you'd have the um, this fella on top of it. So we'll have a look, see what sort of range we get just like that. Right, so Forwards, backwards, forwards and right. Ooh, it's not very tight, is it? What happened there? Something went click. The battery fell out. I thought something had blown up because I didn't put the cover back on. That made me panic. Very fast, is it? But it is working. So that's converting from infrared control to normal um, whatever. Twenty seven megahertz. And we've got rather a wide turning circle there on the right. suppose for completeness we ought to use the transmitter that came with the kit. Uh, forwards, backwards, and left turn. Obviously for this little infrared controlled car this isn't really a very practical conversion because there just isn't the space to get that receiver inside the body shell. But we have been able to demonstrate that we can buy a receiver on AliExpress and convert the car. Just to show that's as low as I can get the body on there before it fouls the um, pot potentiometer on top of the receiver. And just for fun, I have actually wired up the lights. There's actually a tag on the receiver for LEDs. That is just the LED that's supposed to be on to tell you that the receiver is switched on. Normally these would be set up so they switch on when you go forwards. So they're permanently on at the moment. In fact they go a little bit dim when the power is applied.
Anyway, that was just an extra bit of fun. The white wires and the black and white wires are the LED wires. See the tags are labelled L minus and L plus for the LEDs. Hey, thanks for watching. There's plenty of videos on my main channel with more added daily, so don't forget to subscribe and enable the notifications to keep you up to date with my new releases. You can help keep my channel running by donating a dollar on Patreon to buy me coffee. You can always find more information in the video description. Thanks again for watching.